In this video, I'm reviewing this book, The Go Programming Language. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. If you've been watching my channel, you know I'm reviewing a bunch of books about learning Go. And I've had this one come up several times in requests from viewers and readers of my blog. Um, my intention with this series is to find the best book to help you learn Go in 2023. Uh, but this is a classic. It keeps coming up. It was published in 2016. Uh, it's gotten great reviews on Amazon.com. Over 1,200 reviews, an average rating of 4.5 stars. This book is popular, uh, so I understand why it keeps coming up. But again, my goal for this series is to find the best book in 2023 to help you learn Go. But due to popular demand, I've decided to review this book and include it in my series. So let's see how it stacks up today. So first, who is this book for? Well, it's for existing programmers. Uh, in, in the preface, uh, we're told um, that this book is designed for those of you that have, a, have programmed in one or more programming languages, whether compiled or interpreted. That's pretty standard fare for all of these books. Uh, they're, they're designed for existing programmers. Um, now, one thing this book does that I've noticed that most of the others don't do very much is it, it kind of dives into some of the details about like how slices and arrays are arranged in memory. And it gives those sort of diagrams that, I don't know, I kind of expect to see those in a beginner's book. Um, maybe because I learned with, uh, with those back when I was learning programming the first time. Uh, on the other hand, it is a bit more of a more detailed topic, so I guess it could go either way. Maybe it's a beginner's topic, or maybe it's an advanced topic. But this book does have some of that, um, but it, it's still squarely in the realm of books for those who already know how to program. Now, I like to talk about the, the writing style in the book, and, and this book is very well written. Uh, it deserves those uh, stars on Amazon. It, it's a very balanced writing style. Uh, it's it's uh, comfortable. It's not too dry. Um, it's also not fluffy or, or, or maybe too formal. Um, there are some fun anecdotes in the book that make it uh, maybe seem a little bit easier to read, uh, especially at the beginning when it's talking about sort of the history of Go and, and the, the legacy that, that Go has grown out of with regard to the other programming languages, C, C++, and, and some of the other uh, uh, historical languages that, that have influenced Go's history. Now, this book is very well organized. Uh, in, in the preface, there's a section about the organization of the book, and it, it's pretty accurate, I would say. Um, the very first chapter is a is a very high level uh, sort of overview. Uh, the preface calls it a tutorial of Go, and it, it really breaks down. It shows several self-contained short programs, a few dozen lines at most each, uh, and, and breaks them down and kind of shows you what it's doing to help introduce some basic Go concepts. Uh, and then the rest of the book, that the next section in particular, uh, goes into greater depth in those topics and explains them. So then chapters two through six or seven uh, sort of cover the, the typical things you expect in one of these introductory books. They talk about functions and variable types and data types and, and uh, control structures and all, all those good things that you expect to find in an introductory book. And then at the end, the, the last few chapters of the book go into to some other um, deeper topics that are Go-specific. Uh, Go concurrency, uh, how to use reflection, and that uh, that ever elusive testing package is covered in, in one of the chapters at the end of the book. There are also a couple of topics in this book that are presented in, in places you might not expect. Um, JSON marshalling and unmarshalling, for example, the uh, HTML and text templating packages are in the section on composite types. And then it talks about XML marsh unmarshalling uh, in uh, the section on interfaces. So that's not necessarily intuitive, but there is a really good index in the back that makes it easy to find those things. So this book could make for uh, reasonable reference material um, just because the way it's well, it's well organized and indexed. Now the content, this is the part, of course, this is why you're here is to learn about the content. Is this content what you want in 2023? Um, you should not be surprised to know based on the Amazon reviews and the number of stars that the content of this book is very good for 2016 when a book was written uh, and published. Uh, in 2023, there's a lot of things uh, now that are missing. Uh, but before I talk about that, let me talk about some things that uh, I, I kind of alluded to a moment ago that, were, that kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, good things in this book. There's several topics in this book that I wouldn't have expected in a beginner's introductory uh, book. Uh, in particular, the templating. Go templating um, is a powerful way to do templating. 
and uh, there's two packages, HTML template and text template that are both covered in this book. The book also talks about XML, which uh, I, I guess in 2016, that was more used than it is now. And it, of course it's still used, but it's kind of fallen out of favor, but that's talked about in the book. Perhaps the most surprising topic I found in this book is it talks about some of the standard libraries, uh, graphics packages in particular, uh, in the very first chapter, one of the simple examples it gives uh, shows how to create an animated GIF using the standard library. So that's kind of cool. Um, that's not nothing I've ever actually used. I've never pr done graphics programming in Go. I've known that it's possible, um, but that's kind of cool. So th th those are some topics that this book covers that I wouldn't necessarily have expected. But now let's talk about what's missing. Now let me be clear, this is not a criticism of this book as it's written, this is really just pointing out that these things have changed since the book was written. L let me just talk about three or four things that, that I think are really important if you're learning Go in 2023 that this book will not help you with. The first one, and probably the most important one, is Go modules. Go modules, I don't think were even a glimmer in anybody's faintest dreams at the time this book was written. Uh, they came out two or three years after this book was published. Uh, and they really changed a lot about how you set up your project and how you do dependency management. And so this book just completely doesn't cover that at all. Uh, chapter 10 in this book largely talks about the old way of setting up your Go uh, uh, environment with the Go path variable and, and other things like that, which are no longer relevant and will not help you and will probably confuse you. If you're new to Go and you start with this book in 2023, you will very likely be tripped up almost immediately by some of these changes. So that, that's the biggest thing uh, that will that will practically trip up everybody uh, is that this book does not cover Go modules and, it, and you need that in 2023. Next on my list, uh, of course, one of the things I've been looking for in these reviews is a topic uh, of generics, which obviously is not in this book since it came out in 2022. <laughs> and this book was written uh, six years, uh, five or six years before that. Um, but there's other things that maybe aren't top of mind in 2023 that also have not uh, been covered in this book. Uh, one is the topic of context. Uh, the last book I reviewed, uh, Go Fundamentals, talks extensively about context. And that's great because context really is a fundamental part of modern Go programming. Uh, context came out about the same time this book was published, but it didn't make it into the book. So uh, it's been out for a long time, which is probably why I hadn't even thought of that as, a, as something to, to look for. Uh, when I was reviewing these books, because it's it's almost second nature by now, but it's not in this book. And then another topic that this book doesn't cover is error wrapping. Uh, that's not probably as fundamental of a, of a thing, but it is important. And several of the other books do talk about error wrapping, as they should, but sadly this one doesn't. That came out in Go 1.13, which was in uh, 2019. So it, it's understandable why these things aren't covered, but in 2023, if you're trying to learn Go, you want to learn those things. I always talk about accuracy in these reviews and I didn't find any accuracy problems in this book except for the obviously outdated information. Uh, so no complaints there. Physically, this book is quite attractive. Um, it's black text on, on white paper. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a few diagrams to demonstrate memory locations and memory layouts and stuff like that. And I, I think I saw a couple of screenshots, but it, it's really not a graphical book, but there are some light graphics in it. The code samples are well formatted and easy to read. I have no complaints about the physical book at all. It's a it's a very attractive book. My conclusion, uh, I don't think this will surprise anybody. I think this is a great book. It has earned its good reputation. It has earned its four and a half stars on Amazon. It has earned 1200 reviews. But in 2023, you should not be reading this book to learn Go. I would love to see the authors update this with a new revision uh, that, that fixes those problems. It shouldn't be a big task. I think that would be great. I would love to see a, a second edition of this book that addresses the, the, the things that have changed in Go in the last six years. But as it stands today, this should not be the book you read. So I'm getting close to the end of my series. I only have two more books to go. I hope to release those reviews in the next coming days, probably next week early. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when those come out. Then be sure to stick around, of course, for the conclusion video, which will come out after that and tell you which of these books you should read if you're trying to learn Go in 2023. Until then, head over to boldlygo.tech. There you can sign up for my daily Go mailing list where I will send you daily tips or instructions. And right now I'm going through a series on the Go spec that will help you break down and understand the Go spec in easy to understand terms. Again, boldlygo.tech. Go there to sign up for my daily Go mailing list. 
I'll see you in the next video. Until then, boldly go.